Hey guys, Reese here and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to talk about the seven types of people or maybe the seven types of people with certain goals and expectations that should not invest in real estate. Now a quick clarification before we dive in, real estate as an asset class is a great investment. However, there's multiple different ways to purchase real estate. Whether you're going to actively invest, actively find the deals yourself, manage them and go about it that way, or you can invest passively through partnerships or syndications. And you can also invest in real estate kind of through REITs, which are traded on the stock market. I don't love that way, but that is another option for you guys. And so the people that I'm talking about today are those types of people that should not invest actively in real estate. They should instead not give up on the asset class in general because I feel that would give up a lot of benefit that real estate can provide. However, they should look to first and foremost invest passively through a partnership. Then if they can't do that, maybe through a syndication or last and definitely least invest in a REIT through the stock market as a part of their stock portfolio. And so with that said, before we really dive into the video here today, I'd love to ask you guys to go ahead and like this video and subscribe for me. I'd really appreciate it. Very thankful for all of you that have subscribed so far and keep coming back to watch these videos. So thank you so much and let's dive right into the video. So the first type of person that probably should not invest in real estate is the perfectionist and the type of person who really wants to over improve a rental property and make it more of their home instead of what it is a rental property. And honestly, I am one of these people to an extent. So I love everything done to a certain level. I like things perfect. And that's just something that I have to understand about myself and keep an eye out for when I start to over improve or spend too much money on something that really does not add value. And that's really what it comes down to when you're buying rental property. If the money you're spending on a property does not improve the safety, does not improve the longevity of the asset, or it doesn't add value to the property, whether that's increased equity or cash flow in the deal, then it doesn't really make sense because this is an investment and should be treated as such. So for example, if you want to spend $4,000 on new floors in a rental property and your desired return is a 10%, well, you should only do that if one, it's going to greatly reduce turnover, which could save you money, or it's going to add an additional $400 to your rental income every year, which is 10% of the money you're going to spend on those new floors. And so that breaks down to around $33 a month that you need to get in increased rent to really justify that renovation or uh, switching out those floors. However, unfortunately, this type of person likely doesn't correlate the improvements they're making to the property to those key metrics, which are, you know, increased rent, added value to the property, lower unit term, things like that. Instead, they're probably watching TV shows and seeing these lovely flips and, you know, over improving properties. And that's what they want to do. That's where they take their inspiration from, which has a place in real estate invest investing, but you need to make sure you're in the market to over improve. You're working with high end rentals or high end flips or things like that. Now, the second type of person that should really not invest in real estate, or at least not actively, is the person who has the unrealistic goal that real estate is a 100% passive investment and that no work will be required to really grow that investment and make it profitable. If you're looking for a 100% passive source of income, actively investing in real estate just isn't for you. Here's the thing, rental property can provide a substantial return that's mostly passive once that property has been stabilized and set up with a property manager. However, even then, even when you have a property manager handling the day-to-day, -day, you still need to be what's called an asset manager. You still need to make decisions on what capital expenses to make on the property. Pay attention to the numbers, handle bookkeeping, handle working with accountants and really just managing the investment itself, not the day-to-day -day with tenants. And while that definitely doesn't take much time, especially if you're not growing the business anymore and you're not actively looking for new deals, it still does take time that requires work and requires you to actually pay attention on really a monthly basis at the minimum. 
Now, if you are trying to actually buy more rental properties while you own and operate, I mean, that's just not passive at all. The amount of effort that goes into finding a great deal, which in all reality, you shouldn't be buying deals that aren't great or at least good. And it just takes a lot of effort. Even if you're working with a real estate agent, you're going to be analyzing many, many properties before you find one to put an offer in on. And then that will most likely fall through or not get into contract because of the competition, competition in today's market. And so, you know, you need to expect that, hey, there's going to be a lot of work up front to then have that passive income or that semi passive income to retire on in the future. And, you know, my investment strategy is buying value add real estate. And so I need to work with contractors to add that value. And that's a process as well, as you would be surprised at how difficult it is to find and manage contractors that are well-priced and do decent work and actually show up on time. Now you can definitely buy turnkey rental properties, but you'll still have issues that come up even with a property manager and you still need to manage that asset once again on a monthly basis. I highly recommend that if you're looking for a 100% passive investment in real estate, then you look for a partner and that partner would be an active partner and you'll be a passive partner. Now this does require you bring something to the table and usually that's money. So the good news, bad news is that you can make a ton of money in real estate with very little money as an active investor, or you can be passive once you make money and invest with somebody else. The third person who should never invest in real estate is someone that just doesn't want to deal with people. Finding great deals and then operating them profitably is definitely a people game. Forming those relationships with brokers, with other investors, property managers that one, help you find great deals, but two, help you then operate those deals once you purchase them. In addition, if you want to save that money and manage the property yourself, you have to deal with tenants. Now, once again, that's what property managers are for, but they can be expensive and they'll probably never manage the property as well as you could if you put the effort into actually learning how to manage a property well. So, you know, coming from a computer engineering background, I know a lot of those people that, you know, they want to show up to work and work behind their computer, maybe say hi to a colleague or two, and then go home to their family and not see another person, you know, and, and, and that's completely understandable. However, that's not going to be possible with real estate. And, you know, this is actually something I love about real estate where I can network with people, I can build relationships, and I can find screaming deals that just really skyrocket my net worth over time. Real estate is a business. You have to build a great team to really be successful in real estate. And so that means you have lawyers around you, inspectors, mortgage brokers, insurance agents, all these people that, have put, that are on your team to help you succeed in real estate but that requires that you actually build that relationship. The fourth person that should never invest in real estate is those super high income earners where real estate is just not worth your time. Now, unfortunately, right now, I'm not one of those people. However, if you're a doctor or a lawyer or something else where you've been in your career for a while and you're making three, $400,000 a year, well, investing in real estate on a small scale, say two to four units, just probably isn't worth your time to actively invest in. You need to really weigh that time commitment of how much time will you be spending actively managing and finding those rental properties and how much is that time worth to you? For example, say you passively invest with a partner on a deal. You could have bought that deal yourself and made $100,000. However, by working with a active investor, you split it 50-50. You bring all the money and they, and they sacrifice their time, bring the deal, put in all that effort. You split it 50-50, you make $50,000 instead. So you lost out on $50,000 of profit. However, your partner had to put in, say, 300 hours to find that great deal initially and build those relationships and then manage the contractors and then asset manage the deal moving forward. Well, how many more clients would you have to take on as a doctor or a lawyer to make up that $50,000 and how much time would that take you? If you can make that $50,000 in only 150 hours, that just goes to show you should not be wasting your time actively investing in real estate. 
And I think the break even point with these specific numbers is really $300,000. Your time starts to become much more valuable actually pursuing your main career versus actively investing in real estate. And when you look at someone say like Graham Stephan, well, I personally actively manage my contractors. I subcontract, things like that. Graham just hires a general contractor and he pays a lot more money to do his renovations than I would. However, the time that he saves, he can make substantially more money by making an extra one, two, three YouTube videos versus me, you know, that's still valuable to spend my time saving that money on renovations. The fifth person is someone who just doesn't really like real estate. I don't know if this one actually needs much explanation. However, if you don't like real estate, then you shouldn't do anything you don't like. If you're not comfortable with the liability of owning property or the responsibility that owning a property gives you, then you can invest in a syndication or passively invest and not be held liable for the active investor's actions. And then you have insurance to cover you for liability of things that happen on the property. So that might be the way to go at that point and just remove the headache from your life. In addition, if you're not really interested in finding those great deals and like working with people and searching hard and you don't like looking at real estate and going to inspections, then don't bother. There's plenty of people like me who will gladly work with you, take your money and invest it to give you a great return without you doing the effort or having to worry about that asset. Do something better with your time, something that brings you happiness. It doesn't always have to be something that makes you a ton of money. You know, our time is valuable for more reasons than just how many dollars you can earn in that time or the return on investment. So if you need to give up some of that in return by investing with an active partner just because you don't enjoy this, go for it. Six, six is the type of person that wants short-term access to their money. Here's the thing, real estate for the most part is a long-term game. If you want daily access to your capital, it's not for you. Now, you can flip properties if you'd like to. However, that's not really investing at that point, and the IRS doesn't even consider it investing in the tax code. And so you can watch my video on flipping and why I don't personally flip houses. I'll link it up here somewhere to look into that more. However, even then, you still don't have access to your capital for probably four to six months at a time, unless you really ramp things up quickly, then maybe every three months. And so really at this point, the only option for you is to invest in REITs because a syndication or a partnership will also tie up your money, usually for at least five years, more, more likely 10 years. And so a REIT is okay, but at this point you're really buying stock in a company, a real estate investment trust that purchases real estate and operates real estate. So you're not actually investing directly in the real estate itself. And I don't love REITs. I'm actually going to make, I think my next video will be the pros and cons of REITs but they are a way to kind of get your money into real estate and still have daily access to that capital by buying and selling stocks. And finally, the seventh person is the person who has not taken the time to educate themselves on how to find great deals, buy and manage deals, and just successfully invest in real estate. Now we all start off here, you know, we all start off with no education in real estate. However, however if you're the type of person who one, probably doesn't like real estate, but two, because of that, won't take the time to educate themselves properly and is patient enough to not just dive in and actually learn, learn about how to analyze for cash flow, analyze for value add, your market in general. You know, that takes a lot of time and effort. And if you're not willing to do that, you should not invest in real estate. Now, when you get started, I highly recommend you look for a mentor, someone who's in real estate, actively investing, However, even though you have a mentor, you shouldn't be going to them and saying, hey, how much does this property cash flow? Or hey, is this a good deal? What you should be doing is doing your analysis on your own, figuring out the cash flow, is the market getting better or worse? And then bring all this information to your mentor and have an overarching talk about it. Like, hey, here's my analysis. Do you see anything I've missed? That's what a mentor is for. And that's where they can provide the most value. And so once again, if you're not willing to educate yourself or take the time, or you just don't have the time to educate yourself, which I think is kind of an excuse for anybody, but I'll put it out there, then you shouldn't actively invest in real estate. 
Now, if you are interested in learning more about how to analyze a rental property, I'll link a couple videos up here for you guys to dive in and watch some of my past videos where I've outlined this. So guys, that's the seven types of people that really shouldn't actively invest in real estate, but instead passively invest through partnerships, syndications, or I hate to say it, REITs. But, uh, but I hope you enjoy this video, guys. And once again, if you go ahead and leave me a like, I'd really appreciate it. As well as subscribe to the channel. We're getting close to a thousand. I say it in every video, but we're going to get there. And I really appreciate all of you. So have a great day, guys. I'll see you in the next video.